first things first, I'm the realist. Also, before I start saying absolutely anything, this video will contain spoilers about the whole of Scum. If you intend to watch Scum and you don't want it to be spoiled, don't watch this video. Leave, because I'm, I'm about to spoil everything. Sorry. Now that's out of the way. Hi, I am back and I am here to talk to you all about the one thing that I understand in life, and that is Scum. Everyone and their mother knows that this is my favourite TV show of all time. It is literally the most incredible thing I've ever watched. The writing, for the most part, is fantastic. The characters are amazing. The actors and actresses, oh my lord, they are literally so talented. The music is amazing. The cinematography is incredible. The show has ruined, like, <laughs> ruined slash improved so many things for me. If you know, you know. It's ruined carrots for me. Most of the weekend's music. And cardamom, cheese on toast. But actually, cheese on toast really does taste much better with, like, chili and like rosemary and stuff on it so really it helped the the Baz Luhrmann version of Romeo and Juliet blue flowers like I literally just I can't if I hear a song that's been used in Scum that's it it's like a Shrek song except like a Scum song and then I just get very emotional I'll see like a potato and be like <laughs> six Scum reference or like I'll hear I feel it coming by the weekend and I'll just start crying or something you know there are things like that that have been ruined for me, improved for me by Scum. Then there are the things that really, really have changed me through watching this show. I've been watching it since the last week of season three. I managed to catch the last week in December of season three live. So just about six months. It sounds like I'm being dramatic. I'm not, I've changed, it's changed my life. I've watched it three times. Wow, I just slapped my leg. I've watched the whole thing three times. Um, I watched the whole of season four live because it ended two weeks ago and I'm in denial that it ended. I wanted to do something for it finishing. Obviously I covered Lover Where Do You Live um, classic on my main channel, but I wanted to do something like, I wanted to write a song, but I, I'm still a bit traumatized about the fact that it's ended and I can't write music. I decided I was gonna talk about why I love this show so much because I talk about it so much. I never really have time to explain why. So this is what Scum has taught me. There are messages to every every season. There's a show incorporates so, so, so many important topics into just 10, 11 episodes in one season. The idea that you can't, you can't live off of other people's validation. You have to, you have to be able to kind of validate and allow yourself to experience what you experience and feel what you feel without someone else's opinion being what you're hinging it on. Like with Jonas and Eva, or Wilder and Wilhelm. You can't live your life based off of what someone else thinks of you. I think the most important thing from season one was the female friendships. Female friendships in this show are what made me fall in love with it. The girls in the show are so strong. They are so important to each other. They help each other through so, so, so much. It's taught me that like female friendships are the most important thing that you can have, like the most important thing. All of the friendships, every single girl who was friends with another girl, important friendship. The idea that people need people, a classic, really. Every person is an island and you need to communicate and try to understand one another in order to move forward. Otherwise, it leads to misunderstandings and prejudice, which is the reason that wars start, you know, as Sana says, because most of what I take forward in my life and take from the show is what Sana has said. We need to communicate with one another. As well as that, the idea that hate doesn't come from religion, it comes from fear. That message is so important to me because I was in, or I'm in, I don't know, a kind of similar situation to Isak where I have a very religious family and I am not the straightest person alive. But hearing that idea that hate is coming from fear, it's kind of allowed me to have conversations with people who don't necessarily agree with my point of view on everything and are quite ignorant on some things, but I can see that their ignorance is coming from not being exposed to certain cultures, to certain communities, to certain ideas, and that's something you can work on. You don't have to cut people off just because there's a misunderstanding or anything like that. Another thing Sana said, because everything Sana says resonates with me, is that you're most strong and independent when you can admit that you're not necessarily right all the time. And there are some really, really, really moving speeches in this show. I think Eskil's um, pride speech gets me every time. Like, honestly, that speech gets me through a lot. I just kind of think back to 
what they say about pride and you have to be really really strong to kind of put yourself out there in a world that still doesn't necessarily love you for you and in that kind of same vein this show has shown that sometimes the people you least expect are the strongest people Vilda is always gonna have a place in my heart I love her so so much Evan boy honestly Sana mm, I love them so much the your body needs potatoes thing I don't necessarily have the most healthy relationship with food and when I'm in a kind of bad place I kind of go back to those scenes with Nora and Vilda talking about eating and the idea that they're kind of recovering together goes back to the female friendship thing of being so so strong but also showing two people who essentially have struggled with mental illnesses because eating disorders are mental illnesses but have struggled with eating disorders and are helping each other makes me so emotional every single time and I think this show is very good for showing mental illness in a light that is realistic at the end of season three with Isak and Evan nut for nut like taking things minute by minute hour by hour has really helped me sometimes just like slow down when everything seems to be like buzzing manically around me or you just like don't think you can go on being sane I don't know I've never heard I've never seen mental illness represented the way it is on SCARM it, it really helped me there's so much there's so much there are so many messages in this show the idea that being a dickhead is a choice you're not born that way you can choose whether you want to be a horrible person or not even if you've experienced horrible things people see life differently people choose different pathways through life they believe in things differently and that's okay we can still coexist with one another we can still you know celebrate each other what i found personally as a queer person of color watching the show is that I related a lot to Isak with his struggle kind of coming to terms with sexuality. I related a lot to Evan, mental illness wise, and the way he he kind of pulled himself away and stuff. And I related so much to Sana that one speech where she was talking about how she never feels enough. I related so hard. Like it kind of hurt how much I related to it. And I've never heard those kind of views that I've always had in my head spoken so simply and so realistically that I just like, I just, I cried through that whole clip. What a show. But also the celebration of things like, the celebration of Eskil's pride and of living for now and Sana and how much love she has for Islam and just everything, everything about this show, I just love it. Just to condense it, what has this show taught me? The show has taught me that there is hate in the world. There is racism, there's misogyny, there's Islamophobia, homophobia. There are people who will do bad things. And most of it comes from fear, misunderstanding, ignorance, prejudice. And if we don't strive to understand each other and coexist with one another, we can't get anywhere. All of that hate exists, but if we don't try to fight it, it, it just stays, it just stays there. But horrible things happen to people every single day. Everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about, but somehow people still manage to be decent people. People still live on and they don't give up. People are relentless. <laughs> One of the most important things the show has taught me is that when we communicate with each other, we're bridging the gap, we're connecting all our little islands and we bridge the differences and we try to listen and understand and of course everyone sees life differently everyone chooses different paths different beliefs not everyone sees the same things as good but we still fight for what is right in our eyes we still believe in what we want to believe in whether that is jesus or allah or science or parallel universes we still believe that the good will win good will defeat evil pride will defeat shame and love will defeat hate and we find that love through people because people need people people to talk to people to laugh with people to cry with people to lean on we don't have to go through things alone whether we're whether we're living for right this second because you know life is now or we're taking things slower and just trying to trying to find some kind of peace in a world that just seems to be moving at an insane pace one of the main things the show has taught me is that no one is alone. Even if you feel like it, you're not alone. There's always someone to go through the world with you. And in the same way that in season four, Isak said that if you start looking for hate, you'll find hate. If you start looking for love, you'll find love too.
that could be romantic love, like Isak and Evan or Sana and Yusuf. But it could also be platonic love, love between girls, which is so important. Friendships where you support each other and bring each other up instead of tearing each other down because it's so much more beneficial to all of us if we support each other because us girls need to stick together. Friendships between boys, the soft, loving, caring relationships of the balloon squad or the like ride or die friendships of the boy squad. The show has taught me that there is love in big moments, whether that's running through Oslo to save the boy you love or carrying an unconscious girl who seems to hate you all the way home after she collapses at a party or surprising your best friend with a loser van. There is love in those moments, but there's also love in the smaller moments. The small moments where you bring food on a date with a girl who's been fasting since the sun came up. You cut up potatoes with your friend who you know is struggling to eat them. It's Maddie and Magnus dancing in class or Chris on the phone to the beer man. Everyone sending memes to each other and Sana flicking through the photos of all of her friends and smiling. It's Eskil bear hugging Nora in the kitchen and Jonas barely even reacting when Isak says that he likes a boy, not a girl. It's Vilda kissing Sana on the forehead and the balloon squad hugging Evan in that final Hey Riskevi video. It's Jamila and Sana sitting on the swings together and just joking about Ramadan and Eskil and Lin hugging and saying that it's them against the world and they're gonna look after each other. Everything is love. Romantic love, platonic love. Love in the girl squad, the boy squad, the balloon squad. Love between mothers and daughters and brothers and sisters and families, whether that's the family you're born into or the family you create for yourself. Love is everywhere, love links us all together. We all affect that love and we all affect each other in some way and in all the chaos, everything you do has an effect and Scarm has had the greatest effect of all on me and on a lot of other people. And I think that's the greatest thing. They've shown that fear can spread, hate and ignorance and misunderstanding can be everywhere but love also spreads and that's the most important thing. There is love absolutely everywhere. The show has taught me a lot, so much more than I can fit into a video this short honestly and it, I don't think this video is short. It's always going to be important to me and I don't think that any show is ever ever going to live up to the standard that this show has set. I just love Scum a lot. This might not be the last video I'm ever gonna make about it because it's changed my life and I always go back to it and I'm probably gonna start watching it again from the beginning very soon. I like to think that in a parallel universe, Scum hasn't ended and it's still going on.